Vice Marshal Gurren. My wife, my daughter. Your eighth Air Force has destroyed my beautiful Luftwaffe and leveled out beautiful cities. Even so, I prefer to surrender to a fellow airman. Gentlemen, uh, may I? Why are you here? Because we lost the war. And I assumed we shot or hanged. That's up to the court. I've heard of this court. Its opinion does not concern me. The opinion of the German people, that is what really matters. Is that so? It is so. History will show that everything I did was for the greater German Reich. There will be statues of Hermann going all over Germany in 50 years. Little statues, perhaps, but one in every home. You're as fat as a house. Starting right now, I'm putting you on a diet. You will be mentally and physically fit to stand trial. When your name is called, get your ass on a truck. Von Papen. Sure. When we board the plane, get a seat by the window, dear boy. It may be the last view we have of the fatherland. Alfred Yodel. Von Schirach. Omar Schack. Rosa. Good morning. I am Major Neve. I'm the officer appointed by the International Military Tribunal to serve upon the Wait, wait, wait. You're British? I am. Finally, a civilized man. Neve. Neve. What is your given name? Airy. Airy. Major Airy Neve. I have heard this name before. Airy, like the wind. Why? Why would I have heard this name? I was captured, tortured by the Gestapo, and escaped twice. Oh, I see. You've earned your given name. <laughs> I am the officer appointed by the International Military Tribunal to serve upon you a copy of the indictment in which you are named as defendant. I am also here to advise you as to your rights to counsel. I care nothing for lawyers. You can find one for me, Major Airy of the Wind. We're men of culture. We both know the truth. The victors will always be the judges. The vanquished, always the accused. Yes? tomorrow, my friends. Never forget that we are here for one reason, and one reason only. We lost the war. But someday, a grateful German nation will honor our legacy. <laughs> Doctor, what do you have? You have one German. You have a fine man. Two Germans, a punt. Three Germans, a war. <laughs> Are you really in such a good mood, Herr Goering? Or is this your way of handling fear? Fear? What do I have to be afraid of? I have ordered hundreds and thousands of men into battle knowing full well that not many would return. Why should I, their leader, tremble when called upon to face the enemy? I know that I am a condemned man. That is of no consequence. There is still work to be done. And mark my words, it will be done. 
One Englishman, an idiot. Two Englishmen, a club. Three Englishmen, an empire. <laughs> Jackson's speech, pedantic. Tiresome lot of nothing. I nodded off twice. Well, the food is better today. You think they'll feed us like this every day? They always feed you well before they hang you. Yeah, that's so true. They can't hang us. We're soldiers. They have to shoot us. Please! Stop this talk. We must concentrate on our defense. If you're not going to eat, Frank, give it to me. It's a crime to have such good food. Good night, Lloyd. Good night, Rice Marshal. Schwarzbraunes Mädel, du bleibst zu Haus ein darm Mädel, Mädel, wink, 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 unter einer grünen Lehrling. Sitz ein kleiner Fink, 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 Fink
It was a question of removing danger. Only one course was available, protective custody. How could the party rule until it had established order? And how could it maintain order with its deadly enemies, particularly the communists, running free? No further questions. Why am I being punished like a schoolboy? Sperr. Sperr's behind this. He must have talked to Colonel Andlis, persuaded him into this line of action. How do you know it wasn't me? Why Dr. Speer? Is there some kind of rivalry between the two of you? He is ashamed of being a Nazi. I am not. He wishes to infect the others with his shame. You have no shame. The world has now seen proof of the horrors committed by Nazi Germany. You're comfortable defending every bit of it. I've seen so many horrors already. The carnage of the First War, thousands of my countrymen maimed, degraded, starved. No, my dear doctor. I am not an inhuman monster who has no regard for human life. These atrocities are not indifferent to me. You know, we are accused of so many appalling acts, it is hard to keep track. Did you try? My concern was war. And in war, each nation has its own selfish interest. You have to be practical. I am a practical man. And I'm a soldier. And a soldier's code is obedience. <laughs> obedience. This amuses him. Blind obedience without responsibility. Is there nobody in this country that will take responsibility for anything? Nobody who can say no. Take a look at every cell in this block. What do you see? Yes, men. All the no men are six feet underground. What is this? You're not Jewish, are you? Yes, I am. I see it. Well, this is a very interesting situation for both of us. are perhaps aware that you are the only living man who can expound to us the true purposes of the Nazi party and the inner workings of its leadership. I am perfectly aware of that. And you, from the very beginning, together with those who you were associated with, intended to overthrow and later on did overthrow Germany's previous government, the Weimar Republic. That was my firm intention. But upon coming to power, you immediately abolished parliamentary democratic government in Germany. We found it no longer to be necessary. Is it not true that people subsequently were thrown into concentration camps without recourse from the courts? You must distinguish between two categories. Those who had committed some kind of treason against the new state were naturally turned over to the courts. The others whom one might expect such acts, but who had not yet committed them, such as the functionaries of the Communist Party, who were attacking us in the thousands. You've answered the question, thank you. I need to explain further. Well, you'll have the opportunity to explain further under re-examination from your own counsel. Now, did you prohibit all court review of the cause for taking people into what you were calling at the time protective custody? That I answered very clearly, but I should like to make an explanation in connection with my answer. The counsel will see to that. Now, about the concentration camps. Mr. Justice Jacks. The tribunal thinks the witness ought to be allowed to make what explanation he thinks right in answer to this question. The tribunal thinks that you should be permitted to explain your answer now, and it will listen to that explanation. I want to say that I issued a decree that those who were turned over to the concentration camps should be informed after 24 hours of the reason and allowed an attorney after 48 hours. This by no means rescinded my order that a court review of these measures was not permitted. Now, by protective custody, you mean that you were taking people into custody who had not yet committed a crime, but you believed might quite possibly commit a crime in the future? Yes. 
just as extensive protective measures are being taken in Germany today on I a tremendous I didn't ask you about Germany scale. today. Mr. Justice Jackson. This is poor preparation. The witness may finish his explanation. say that you were against the attack on Soviet Russia, yet you gave no warning to the German people. You brought no pressure to bear to prevent the attack. You did not even resign to protect your place in history. We were at war, and such differences of opinion could not be brought before the public during war. This was the case in your own country. As to your second question. That will suffice. I'm not finished. Secondly. Your Honor, please. I... The witness must be allowed to have his say. Secondly, as far as my resignation is concerned, I do not wish even to discuss that. For I was an officer, a soldier. I served my country. Now I ask thirdly, you this. Your I was not, please. Thirdly, I was not the man to forsake someone to whom I had given my oath of loyalty every time he was not to my way of thinking. Your Honor. It never, ever occurred to me to leave the Fuhrer. Your Honor, the witness is adopting a contemptuous attitude toward this tribunal, which is giving him the trial that he never gave a living soul, nor dead ones either. No objection, Your Honor. I'm ready for the next question. I think this is probably a good point to adjourn for the day. When he asked me why I did not resign, I lectured him about loyalty. You should have seen Jackson's face, his face. Oh, it's a totally foreign concept to him. <laughs> you know, if I didn't know better, I would say Jackson was a Jew. <laughs> no, no, keep it, keep it. My initials, see, engraved. That's real nice. I'm never gonna forget this. I know, Lieutenant, I know. Hmm. Sit down. You know, my friends call me Tex. All right. Tex. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Tex. America will soon learn that they are backing the wrong philosophy here. We should both be together fighting the forces of communism. You think? Oh, yeah. You think? Yeah. 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 I think we both think, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from the very beginning, you regarded the elimination of the Jews from the economic life of Germany as under your jurisdiction, did you not? Yeah. Elimination from economic life. That is partly correct. Uh, large industries, also armed industries, under Jewish directives. Was that the first of your legal measures against the Jews? I believe removal from office was first in 1933. Then, in 1936, you personally drafted an act making it punishable by death to transfer property abroad? That is correct. And another, that all damage caused to Jewish property by the anti-Jewish riots of 1938 must be repaired by Jews at their own expense with their insurance claims forfeited to the right. I did sign a similar law, whether it's exactly the same way. And did you not say about those riots, I show you this transcript, did you not say, I wish you had killed 200 Jews instead of destroying such valuables? That was said in a moment of bad temper and extreme excitement. Spontaneous sincerity, in other words. Did you not also personally sign a decree in September 1940 ordering seizure of all Jewish property in Poland? I assume so, if the decree is there. And another which provided that Jews receive no compensation for damages caused by enemy attacks or 
by German forces. If the law bears my name, then it must be so. Is this your signature? It appears to be. Is it or is it not your signature? It is. Your signature on a decree dated July 1941 asking Himmler and Heydrich and the SS to make plans for the final solution of the Jewish question. That is not a proper translation. I said total solution, not the final solution. These are your words to Himmler. I charge you to send me before long an overall plan concerning the organizational, factual, and material measures necessary for the desired solution of the Jewish question. Is that an accurate translation of what is written in this order from you to Heydrich and Himmler? That had to do with immigration and evacuation of the Jews. And you ordered all other government agencies to cooperate with the SS in the final solution of the Jewish question, did you not? There's nothing in there about the SS. This document states you personally ordered all government agencies to cooperate with the SS. You sent this letter to SS Gruppenfuhrer Heydrich. That doesn't mean that the SS had anything to do with the solution to the Jewish question. I'll say this clearly. I did not know anything that took place or the methods that were used in the concentration camps later. These things were kept secret from me. And I might add that in my opinion, even the Fuhrer did not know the extent to what was happening. Witness, there is evidence before this court that nearly 10 million people have been exterminated. Murdered in cold blood. You mean to say that you did not, and in your opinion, Hitler did not know what took place in the concentration camps? Yeah. Do you know that Hitler said in 1943, in a recorded meeting, I read you his words now, quote, the Reich's Minister of Foreign Affairs declared that the Jews should be exterminated or taken to concentration camps. There is no other possibility. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ribbentrop, talked with Hitler about extermination. And you were above Ribbentrop. You were Hitler's second in command. You were in charge of the economic four-year plan, so you knew all about the gold wedding rings and the gold teeth and the gold eyeglasses that the victims left behind. And you have heard that it took five extra minutes to kill the women because they had to cut their hair off to be used in making mattresses. And nothing was told to you about this material that came from these people that had been murdered? No! No! How can you imagine such a thing? I was laying down the broad outlines of the German economy. The witness is excused. I am not finished. The witness is excused. I am not finished. The witness is excused. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, thanks. Thanks, my friend. Come in. Thank come you. in. Come in. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Oh, it's good to see you. <laughs> I know that uh, Christmas time can be a lonely thing away from home. Merry Christmas, Rex Marshall. Oh, my dear Dex. What luxury, huh? Prost. Cognac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you be doing now, hey, back in Texas? Well, uh, on Christmas morning, we'd uh, open our presents and mm -hmm. then go to church. And after that, we'd head over to Grandma and Grandpa's for a big roast turkey dinner. After that, Dad, Grandpa, and me, we go out back hunting for pheasant, quail. Ah, hunting. Hunting was my passion. 
I was Germany's chief gamekeeper. No kidding. Oh, the shooting around my estates at Cowan Hall was wonderful. Did Hitler ever go hunting with you? I shouldn't tell you this, but uh, Hitler did not approve of hunting. He felt that killing animals was immoral. He was a vegetarian, you know. Yeah? Oh, yes, he was a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that did not stop him from being the most gracious host in Europe. <sighs> His dinner parties were legend, always the finest caviar, champagne. Although he did not partake, he was not intolerant. He would uh, dazzle his guests with every view under the sun until dawn. <laughs> I remember, I remember once we were celebrating the triumph of Compiègne, where we savored the sweet revenge of the French having surrendered in the very same railway car that the Germans had capitulated in in 1918, you know. That must have been something. Oh, it was. Believe me. It was. You know, Rex, I have made my career as a military man. And I have to say, you remind me of some of the finest young German soldiers who served under me. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Rat catcher catching rats. Is that the kind of thinking it takes to carry out state-sanctioned mass murder? Not just blind obedience, but also a belief that your victims are not human. Let me ask you this. What was Hiroshima? Was it not your medical experiment? Would Americans have dropped bombs as easily on Germany as it did upon Japan, killing as many civilians as possible? I think not. To an American sensibility, a Caucasian child is considerably more human than a Japanese child. America was at war with Japan, a country that had attacked it without provocation. You murdered millions of your own citizens. And what about the American citizens of the Japanese race who were put into protective custody in your own concentration camps? That was wrong. And why was this not done to American citizens of Italian and German descent? I said it was wrong. And what about the Negro officers in your own army? Are they allowed to command troops in combat? Can they sit on the same buses as the whites? The segregation laws in your country and the anti-Semitic laws in mine, are they not just a difference of degree? Let me tell you, from the beginning of the century, through the first war, until the rise of Hitler, the Freemasonry of the Jewish merchants consistently undermined the German economy and the nationhood of the fatherland. That is why we made anti-Semitic laws and why you, my friend, can never understand anti-Semitism. Why? Because you are. Achoo. The defendants may now make their final statements. Defendant Hermann Goering. This has been a poor excuse for a trial. But firstly, I must reiterate my lack of knowledge for these terrible mass murders, which I cannot begin to understand. And furthermore, I condemn wholeheartedly. As to the trial, the statement of the defendants were accepted as true only when they supported the prosecution. They were treated as perjury when they refuted the indictment. This is not a basis of proof. Why am I in the dock being treated as a common criminal? I said to my judges, have no illusions. Since the three greatest powers on earth, together with other nations, fought against us, we finally were conquered by tremendous enemy superiority, justice as absolutely nothing to do with this trial. Bravo, bravo. Mm-hmm.
some of the lovely food. Guards talk that you will all be hanged. I won't be hanged. But I assure you that I plan to. Perhaps the court will send you to an island like Elba. And we could join you there. Go on, eat, eat. <laughs> Do you think that we would be allowed to take some of the food home with us? I don't see why not. Defendant Herman Goering. The tribunal finds you guilty on all four counts and sentences you to death by hanging. Rudolf Hess. On the charges of crimes against humanity, the tribunal finds you not guilty. Lieutenant, my dear tax, why this long face? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have I not told you there's a special place in Valhalla waiting for me? I don't know. I just thought things might have turned out differently, that's all. Well, you know, they might have done. But for one very unfortunate thing. Those mass murders. I must tell you, I could not see their purpose. They were absolutely unnecessary. They made no sense from a nationalistic point of view. Our legacy has been forever attainted. But make no mistake, everything Hitler did before the war was right. The German people knew it. And one day they will eventually remember it. And you must remember it too, my dear Tex. When you remember me, remember that, eh? Yeah. Now, the practical matter. Ah, there are a few things I want to give you. No, sir. Oh, sh 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 please, please. Mm. <laughs> Where I'm going, I must travel light. <laughs> it's inscribed, see, with my name. Take it. Take it. The few valuables I have, they are in my blue briefcase in the package room. Can you retrieve that for me, my dear Tex? Yes, sir. I have only one question to ask you. Is there absolutely no possibility that I may be allowed to face a firing squad and die a soldier's death? None. Just as well. I hear the Americans are very poor shots. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must write a letter. For the rest of my life, Herr Reichs Marshal, people will ask me what your final thoughts were. We'll have nothing to tell them. You can tell them this. I say, for now and all time, the foreigners who imposed the sentence upon me may murder me, but they have no right to judge me. That I deny them. Now, you must excuse me, I do have to write this letter. My one and only sweetheart, my life came to an end when I bade you farewell for the last time. Do not grieve, my dearest one. Since then, I have felt at peace with myself and consider my death a deliverance. All my thoughts are with you and our own dear sweet child. 
my last heartbeats of our great and eternal love. Cyanide. Son of a... 